All right, going on now to example number three, which actually happens to be the last example in this section. Uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to add these two radicals together. But this time now we're throwing in just a tad bit of a loop, uh, which are fractions. So, so let's see what the deal is over here. All right, so we're going to want to try to um, add these two guys together. We have 2 times the radical 32 over 36 plus 2 times the radical 27 over radical 108. All right, so let's try to simplify this guy. Again, that's always our goal, right? We want to simplify our radicals and then see what we can take it uh, from there. Um, so when I have one big radical, I can break that up into two separate radicals. So I'm just going to rewrite this as 2 times radical 32 over radical 36. Okay, and it's the same thing like on the right side. If I have a radical on top, radical on the bottom, I can rewrite that as one big radical. Okay. So now this just becomes something that we learned in the beginning of this chapter, which is simplify radical 32, simplify radical 36, and then, and then you know, if, if we can cross cancel stuff out or something like that. So check this out here. So square root of 32. So what perfect square number uh, goes into 32, right? I believe it's going to be 16. So I can rewrite this as 2 times radical 16 times radical 2. Okay, so square root of 32 became radical 16 times radical 2. 16 times 2 is 32. And then uh, we, we uh, 36 is a perfect square, so that's just going to become 6. So that's nice right there. So square root of 16 is just 4. So 2 times 4 times radical 2 all over 6. 2 times 4 becomes um, 8. So I could say that's going to be 8 radical 2 over 6. Okay, I just multiply 2 and 4 to give us um, 8. And we don't want to leave it like this where we have an 8 over 6. We want to um, go ahead and divide by a common factor. And so since 2 goes into 8 and 2 goes into 6, I'm going to, and that's how you simplify these. Oops, let me write that over again. You simplify fractions by getting a common number that you can divide both the top and the bottom by. Okay, so, so that's why I'm putting like this little you know, divide by 2, divide by 2. I'm going to divide top and bottom by 2. And uh, when we do that, then it becomes 4 radical 2 all over 3. Okay, so all that work right there was to simplify this, all right? And we'll come back to that like after we simplify the right side over here. So the left side is 4 radical 2 over 3. Okay. Now let's uh, come over here and let's simplify this. So 2 times C radical 27. We want a perfect square number that goes into 27. And I believe that would be uh, radical 9 times radical 3, right? 3 times 9 times 3 is 27. Cool beans. Oh, 108. Oh, a little bit of a trekali right there. So, you know, we could try 4. Okay, and um, if you try four, that's going to go in uh, 27 times, but there's probably a bigger number than four because 27 can also be broken down. So let's see if we can find the bigger one. And I believe that's going to be a 36. So I can rewrite this as the square root of 36 times the square root of three. So it's always uh, really helpful to have the squared numbers and the third roots or the third powers and fourth powers in front of you. And you can just kind of see, oh, yeah, that can go into it that many times there. All right. Uh, let's see. I can rewrite square root of 9 as 3. So that's 2 times 3 radical 3. And I can rewrite square root of 36 as 6 times radical 3. All right. Well, look at this. What a, what a. Right? The radicals cancel out. I mean, it's, it's the whole thing. There's a radical 3 on top and there's a radical 3 on the bottom. Those are just gone. And 2 times 3 is 6 over 6. And isn't that just nicely 1? Cool. So, remember, we're, we're adding the left side plus the right side. Well, the left side became this and the right side is 1. Okay? So, now, last but not least... Um, I mean, we're done with the problem here, but let me just show you one thing real quick. Uh, the answer that you may need to give your answer for the for the assessment, for the quizzes, or for the homework, they may want to have you write it as a common denominator. Okay, and so let me just show you um, like how to do that right now. Oops, my thing's kind of lagging here. All right, so 
I want both of my numbers to have the same denominator. So if I want this side to have a denominator of three, right? Because this already has a three. We can say this technically has a one right here. So if I want the one to become a three, I multiply top and bottom by three. You see, because now both of the denominators have a three. So I can rewrite this as four radical two plus three. 4 radical 2 plus 3, and that's all over our common denominator of 3. Okay, so basically what, what I'm showing you right now is, is this, and that is these are equivalent. The left side and the left side right here and the right side are the same number. It's just that 1 is written as a rational number, which just means that it's a fraction. That's what rational means, and it's all under one denominator. This one has a fraction plus you know, some whole number here um, but I think it's important that that you just know how to do both ways because uh, sometimes the way that you're supposed to report your answers are very particular and this way you would want to do that if you want your answer to be under one denominator okay hopefully that made sense if not you could send me an email and I can uh, explain that even further for you okay all right let's go on now to uh, part B here um, I won't be able to fit B and C all together here let me just move I'm just gonna move this down. I'm just gonna move this down here, and uh, so I have room to do parts B there. All right, so let's see what the deal is with this guy. Okay, so so again we have uh, this radical plus this radical. Let's first break down each radical here. So this means the square root of 80 all over the square root of y to the power of 4. Bless you. Uh, thank you. Okay, so let's see. Square root of 80. Let's break down the square root of 80. It's a square, right? Because it's a ghostly 2 here. So we want to see what's the what's the biggest perfect square number that uh, goes into 80. Hmm. Oh, let's see. Oh. This is going to be 16. So I can rewrite this as the square root of 16 times the square root of 5 all over. Now remember this here. Since this is the 2 right here, and since 2 goes into 4 nicely, we can just rewrite this as y squared because 4 divided by 2, 4 divided by 2 is just 2 right there. Okay, so, so that we always do that when this is an, an even number, and that's an even number right there. All right, and we, we can rewrite the square root of 16 as 4, right? So this is 4 radical 5 all over y squared. Okay, so let's put that on hold. That's the left side of our problem, right? Uh, we just simplified the left side of our problem. And let's now do the other side. Square root of 81 over y power of 10. So that means square root of 81 all over square root of y to the power of 10. All right. So the square root of 81 is a nice perfect square number. So that's just 9. Sweet. And the square root of y to the power of 10. Sweet. Look, this is a 2 and that's a 10. So uh, 10 divided by 2 is just 5. So that's y to the power of 5. Cool. So let's re re rewrite both our left and right side. So we have the left side plus our new simplified right side right there, which is 9 over y to the power of 5. Okay, so we're done right now. However, we may need to, like I said in last in part A, we we may need to write our answer as a one rational um, expression now, where it's just one denominator. Okay, so that means we need to do a little bit of manipulating, and we're going to need to get a common denominator. Okay, and so let's see here. This has y to the power of 2, or there's two y's right here, like y times y, and this is y to the power of 5. In fact, there's five y's. So if I want these denominators to be the same, okay, watch this now. This has two y's, and this has five y's. So that means if I want this to have five y's so that, so that they have the exact same thing, I can multiply this side right here by y to the power of 3. Because isn't y to the power of 3 times y to the power of 2 y to the power of 5? And see how they both have the same denominator now? But I have to do the same thing then to the top so I don't change the fraction, okay? All right. So if I do that, now I have one common denominator, y to the power of 5. 
and this right here we're just going to write as 4 y to the power of 3 times the square root of 5 and then plus 9. So basically, really we're not combining any terms here. We're just writing them together. But the way we write it in mathematics, we always put the number first and then our variable and then our radical last. That's just the order right there. All right, and uh, so that's going to be uh, that answer right there. Okay. All right, so let's see. What else do we have going on up in the house? All right, last but not least, part C. Let's go ahead and break down on the left-hand side here. All right. And uh, so this is 2 times the square root of 75 all over the square root of 16. Well, square root of 75 can be written as square root of 25 times the square root of 3. Okay, 25 times 3 is 75. All over, oh, and 16 the perfect square. So we can just rewrite that as 4. Square root of 25 is 5. So that's 2 times 5 radical 3 all over 4, right? So last but not least, I can rewrite this as 2 times 5 is 10, radical 3 all over 4, okay? Oh, actually, I guess there's one more step there to simplify that. Uh, 10 and 4 have a common uh, number that you, that you can divide both the top and bottom, right? I could divide the top by 2, and I could divide the bottom by 2. So 10 divided by 2, and then 4 divided by 2. So the, really, this whole thing um, all becomes... 5 radical 3 all over 2. Okay, so the left side is 5 radical 3 over 2. And you can go ahead and look at that work right there. All right, let's go and simplify the right side. So let's do this. Uh, 4 times radical 8. See, So let's see, that can be broken down to radical 4 times radical 2. 4 times 2 is 8 all over. Uh, that's square root of 16 times square root of 2. Right? 16 times 2 is 32. Ah! 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 Yeah, we can look at they. They both have the exact same thing. We can just go and break those, um, slash those guys away. So, that means this becomes 4 times. Square root of 4 is uh, 2. All over. Square root of 16 is 4. Right? Uh... Uh, 4 times 2 is 8 over 4, right? And doesn't 8 and 4 have a common factor? Well, yeah, I mean, you could have probably saw that up here. See how they both have a 4 right here? You can go ahead and cross out the 4s and say it's 2, or say, oh, look, 4 goes into 8 uh, two times. Okay, so that's why I'm going to go ahead and just drop this down here. So this, So the whole right side became 2. Okay, so this whole thing right here, so far, simplified has become 5 radical 3 over 2 plus 2. Okay, so we're done. But there's another way that we can write this, right? You know, as I've been showing you, we can always write it as a, a single fraction. And so right now, this has a, this uh, technically has a 1 right there. So if I want the 2 and the 1 to be the same number, I have to multiply this, the, the right side, top and bottom, by 2. Okay, so I'm going to multiply this by 2 and that by 2. You can see now how they have a common denominator of 2. Oh, okay, all right. So this then becomes 5 radical 3 plus 4 all over 2. And that's going to be it uh, right there. And right there.